Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So I wanted to make another video. I made the one recently talking about BlackBerry making a comeback and do we think it can work this time? And another topic that I was thinking of is, does the world still need BlackBerry? I mean, we've kind of moved on in most areas from the physical keyboard. Everything in the world wants to be touch now. It wants to be all touch screen. Uh, you, it's like we're moving towards a world where everything's going to look like the Star Trek bridge on the ship. Everything's all touchscreen slides and all this crazy stuff. Is there still a place for a physical keyboard? I mean, if you look at your home computer and your laptop, you're still using a physical keyboard. So why doesn't it make sense for so many more people on the phone? And I've got a couple of thoughts on this because, yeah, there are a lot of phones that do it really well with no keyboard. But still, there are those of us who really love the physical keyboard and it brings value to us while it doesn't to others. And I want to explore that in this video and talk about it. But before we get into that, I do want to say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell when updates when new videos come out. Let's talk about some Blackberries. <music> So this is the oldest BlackBerry that I have in my inventory, the BlackBerry 7100G. This was my very, very first BlackBerry. Back when the romance with physical keyboards was getting close to its peak, about the mid-2000s, before people really started looking for an alternative in touchscreen phones. And if you remember the first couple of touchscreen phone generations, they were pretty terrible. Uh, up until the iPhone came out, there was just nothing that could compete with the good old keys. And this one right here is the nice keyboard style where it has two different letters per key and it worked really well. Plus it had the little scrolly wheel on the side. So you got an extra level of sophistication there for interacting with the screen. See, keyboards were our way of interacting with the screen because touchscreen stuff hadn't even been invented yet. I, it had, but it just really wasn't so much in the phone space until later on. You would have a physical keyboard and some buttons and directional arrows to interact with your screen. So enter stage right, you get the track wheel. And that really opened things up for BlackBerry users because we needed to scroll through our emails. We needed to scroll through the browser. There was a lot of stuff that the scroll wheel really helped out a lot. And then that moved to a trackpad or it moved, actually moved to the rollerball. The rollerball was cool other than they got dirty and they blew out the mechanism after you used them for a couple of years. But we still relied on the keyboard. That was our primary input method. And you got a lot of great things there, the alt key, the shift key, the convenience key. It was just like using a regular keyboard on your computer, but a pocket size one for your thumbs. So where did we get to the point where we didn't need that anymore? And enter stage right, the iPhone, which was cool. And one thing that I will give BlackBerry a lot of flack for is I really feel like they kind of rested on their laurels for a little while. They thought people just wanted to do their business on a BlackBerry. Like they didn't comprehend the idea of social media. They didn't think there would be a reliable alternative that people would want to use to BlackBerry Messenger that would keep people coming and staying on the platform. They never imagined things like Instagram and Pinterest. They're like, no, people just want basic browsing. They don't want to play games. Why would anyone play games on a phone? Like, this is a professional world. And see, BlackBerry gave the civilian world a taste of what a smartphone was like. And then iPhone came along and perfected it. And then <laughs> BlackBerry was like, holy cow, we got to catch up. So... There was a logical downfall to what happened with their phones, but I still think there's a place for a physical keyboard. See, nobody said we didn't need that. They just said we want all these other things on our phone. We got it okay in our minds that it was okay for Father Google to have access to everything and everyone could skim everything they wanted off the top and from our phones because, well, it's not hurting us. And that's the big great illusion that really helped draw people away from BlackBerry. BlackBerry was always about security, security and productivity. And then along came this idea that you could play games and who cares about security? Everybody's taking your information. It's no big deal as long as my credit card's not getting stolen and then that's all right, I've got protection. So, and that really is what allowed Apple to pull away. And it also was cool. Phones were made cool by BlackBerry, and then they were made even more cool by the fact that they became more of a status symbol. I mean, it was a status symbol to have the BlackBerry on your hip with the holster, but then it became like an old man's professional thing. You're tethered to the man, you're tethered to your job. And then the iPhone was like, hey, you can listen to iTunes. You can play games. <laughs> you can use iMessage, uh, you know, whatever. There's, there's lots of different things that iPhone brought in because they had already been capitalizing on it with the iPod. It was a very logical transition. So... 
All those great things, it's great. We have these amazing modern smartphones that are like 90% replacements for desktops and laptops. I was talking to a buddy of mine earlier saying, you know what? I do like 90% of the things I used to spend hours a day sitting on my computer on my phone now. And it's great. You can do everything. You can basically do anything you need to do minus like work projects <laughs> straight from your phone. But I actually find that a keyboard works better for that. And that's where we enter stage right with BlackBerry. See, BlackBerry has always been there for us whenever it comes to being the best at productivity. You can get the most out of a keyboard as opposed to a software keyboard, it's more accurate. Yes, I understand some people type really fast on a screen keyboard, I do too, but the accuracy is what gets you. You don't have the Alt key, you don't have the Shift key, so you can just hammer out the numbers and the symbols and all the characters when you're trying to do stuff. And then punctuation. And that's another thing. A lot of people really got away from punctuation and spelling and rely way too much on autocorrect. So the keyboard, though, is not obsolete. And one nice thing about that with BlackBerry is they've been so inventive with it because not only can you type on it, you got the shortcut keys. You just press the letter and you pull up an app. You get the speed key on the BlackBerry key, too, to where you can shift and move inside of apps while you're inside of another app with your speed key. You can hop from one to the other. So there are great ways you can use this construct of a keyboard to maximize your experience in the touchscreen world. And that's what keyboards are all about. They allow us to communicate. They allow us to leverage the power of the device that we're using. But then you get security. And yes, all of these brands talk about security. We got the Titan chip with Pixel, Apple and their closed ecosystem. There are all these different catchphrases and the different Samsung Knox security software. The, they've all got their own little thing, but how secure is it? And BlackBerry was always known. BlackBerry was known and tested as being the most secure. Yes, I know a lot of these methods are more secure now than some of the phones that used to be, and they've got capabilities to operate on DoD networks and all that stuff and limited control capacities. But when you talk about grassroots level, does BlackBerry still bring that to the table? Because that's paramount in 2022 and in beyond. And that's one of the reasons why BlackBerry is getting so many contracts with these car companies is because they're secure, they've got QNX, and they have a proven track record there. And one day when they can find a way to monetize all that, they're gonna make a lot of money off of it, ideally. But they've moved on from the handset division, which is why it's licensed out. But that's where Onward Mobility comes in under the licensing agreement and still plan on having the most secure smartphone in the world. If you can have the most secure smartphone in the world, if you can leverage the power of the keyboard whenever it comes to using Android and give people the physical keyboard experience, give people that cutting edge technology with whatever complementary keyboard constructs they come up with, and then give you all that under the umbrella of BlackBerry security, I think that there's still a great place for BlackBerry in the world today. And whether that's primary in you know, enterprise, what they carry over to where, like the civilian consumer market, that's fine. If it's backed by government contracts and people in the workforce who want to pick these up and be managed by their IT departments again, that's cool. As long as you can still use it at home and you still have the capability to use as a regular phone, I think it's a win-win. I don't see how anyone would say it's not a win-win to have a really secure phone. And then looking at the keyboard side of it, for people who do like the keyboard, that's even more of an added benefit and it's something we value and appreciate. So, no, it's not for everybody. I mean, clearly most of the world has moved on, but there's nothing wrong with you not moving on. There's nothing wrong with me not moving on because we found something and it works. That's like saying, well, we have eight speed automatic transmissions in cars now. You don't need a manual transmission. Who needs that? Maybe we just like to drive them, people. <laughs> I mean, I wish people could look at the phone world the same way we looked at the car world. You've got Ford, you've got Mazda, you've got Lincoln, you've got Ferrari, you've got all these different brands, and nobody says, well, you don't need that because you've got this. They just say, well, people like that car, so that's what they buy. So that's kind of how I think we should approach the phone world, and maybe we'll still have more brands around because people realize it doesn't have to be one or zero. It doesn't have to be Samsung or Apple. It can be LG, or it used to could be. It could be Sony. It could be BlackBerry. It can be all these different ones because that's what suits your individual need and preference. That's what you like, and that's what I like. And that's one of the other elements to why I think BlackBerry is so relevant today. It There's a lot of people that still love them. We just need to get the good one out on the market from on Mobility so we can all be on the same page with the brand new BlackBerry again and be happy with our keyboard and our security and our BlackBerry. So, in summation, yes, I think that there is a place for them in the world. I think they still are necessary and they should still exist. 
And I think a lot of people think that too, which is why we're going to get a new one. So that's all I've got in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.